ladies and gentlemen, to the first episode of FF Power. My name is Josh Geddon, and I'm so excited to bring this to you guys. And we are not wasting any time. We're kicking things off with the FF World Championship on the line in our opening contest. We have the champion Samara Morgan defending against the number one contender, Bulma. Of course, Bulma won the number one contendership in a triple threat match on the previous Super Show. And we are here in Evansville, Indiana. I believe I is Indiana. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm never sure when it comes to the abbreviations, okay? I'm locationally challenged. Leave me alone. Here comes Bulma. Not so much looking to regain the FF World Championship. Uh, it would be her first time winning it, but, again, it's a new title. But she was the former UCT Femtop Champion. She went into XCW FF Fusion against Samara Morgan, who was the TAW Femtop Champion. It was a title unification match, and Bulma came up short in that contest. But she won a triple threat matchup uh, against uh, Tifa Lockhart and Xena the Warrior Princess. Those two will be in our main event later tonight to become number one contender to get this rematch against Samara Morgan. And what better way to kick the show off than with a world title match? Of course, we're kicking the show off with a world title match and closing with a number one contendership match. Uh, the main event tonight is a last woman standing match. Xena the Warrior Princess versus Tifa Lockhart. And the winner of that match will be the number one contender for the world title. So they'll basically... The winner of our opening contest will face the winner of our closing contest for the FF World Championship. And that's how we're doing it here on this episode of FF Power, the inaugural episode, and here comes the champion, the seemingly invincible and unbeatable Samara Morgan, clutching her new championship uh, tightly to her chest, does not want to, she has not relinquished it at all, and ever since she defeated uh, She-Hulk back at Armageddon for the TAW Finn Patel Championship, ending her historic reign. Uh, later tonight, we also have a fatal four-way number one contenders match. We have, uh, uh, of course, that's to determine who will be uh, next in line to challenge Bayonetta for the FF YouTube Championship. The tag team champions are in action later tonight. And we have a bunch of other stuff going on throughout the show, and I'm excited to get to it. But again, we're kicking things off in a big way here with the FF World Championship on the line. And I am so excited for this. Of course, the first episode of XTW closed with the Royal Rumble. We're closing this episode with the last woman standing match. And, of course, we're opening with the championship on the line. The first episode of XTW, uh, Unleashed, started with a championship match, and that saw Kermit the Frog defeating Woody for the Lightning Weight title. Can Bulma follow suit and usurp Samara Morgan for the FF World Championship? And look at that belt. That belt is gorgeous. I'm now patting myself on the back furiously. You're welcome. <laughs> look at that belt. I, I, You know what? Breaking the fourth wall, I think I did a good job. I, I, am I allowed to pat myself on the back at all? Is that not is that self-aggrandizing? Okay, maybe a little bit. But anyway, our opening contest for the FF World Championship. Again, this is a rematch from Fusion. These two went head-to-head, -head and it was a close battle. Uh, but Samara Morgan was able to defeat Bulma to win the FF World Championship, unifying the belts. Can she repeat that success here in our opening contest? And you know both Xena and uh, Tifa are going to be watching this matchup very closely to uh, size up who they may be facing. Oh, look at this. Oh, already trying to get the jump on one another. Bulma went for a dropkick, but she missed it, and Samara nailed her with a leg drop and a big right hand. That is not how Bulma wanted to start this matchup. Perhaps she got a little too overzealous trying to start things off with a dropkick against Samara, because, again, she lost to Samara at Fusion. She's firing back. Nice northern light suplex by Bulma. And uh, uh, immediately right back up. Yeah, that's not going to keep her down for long. Oh, look at this. And a Tiger Bomb! Tiger Bomb by Samara! I don't think I've ever seen her do that before. New wrinkles in the offense here. And old oh, big right hand. Oh, and now going for the abdominal stretch on Bulma. Man, how is it? can anyone figure out Samara Morgan? Oh, she, oh, Bulma was able to figure her way out of that hip toss, uh, out of that uh, abdominal stretch with a hip toss right there. And look at that. Samara went for a clothesline, but Bulma was able to block it. What oh, a nice double leg takedown. And now, uh, now going right after a single leg crab here. All oh, but Samara right next to the rope. Uh, Bulma needs to get her a little bit farther away from the ropes before she starts going for submission attempts. As this is a championship matchup, ladies and gentlemen, pinfall or submission only are the only ways that the title can change hands. Count or DQ, the title stays with the champion. What is Bulma waiting for here? And, oh, big suicide dive, wiping out the champion. That's what Bulma needs to do if she wants to win the championship here in our opening episode of... Fem oh, oh, but runs right into a clothesline. Did not follow up. Did not follow up. Oh, man, she got... She got flattened by that clothesline. Again, this is our inaugural episode of FF Power. And both of these ladies want to leave a good impression. 
Although, again, Samara Morgan is terrifying, and she... Oh, but that, that may have been a mistake. That may have been a mistake, uh, going back in the ring to break up the count. But Bulma dropped kicked her right in the knee as soon as she got back outside. Is this a strategy by Bulma going after the leg? Oh, it looked like Samara was briefly uh, signaling for a choke slam, but was not able to connect with a shot to the gut. Oh, what is Bulma doing here? Bulma needs to do something big here. And... Oh, knee right to the face! I would go for the cover right there. Got her right in the face. Oh, Bulma perhaps setting up for the Capsule Corp stunner. Oh, oh no, a really quick uh, face buster. Nice face buster by Bulma. Oh, Bulma going to try to win the title off of that. Dragging her away from the ropes. Does not want a rope break. Now into the first cover. One, two, no, oh, and a two and a half. So more and more going to able to kick out. Bulma thought that was it. But again, that was the first pinfall attempt of the match off of that sit-out face buster. Oh, oh went for a drop kick, but Samara was able to avoid it. Nice evasion by Samara Morgan. I, stuff like that is why she's the champion and why she's been champion for so long. But cover off the drop kick. One, but only a one count. Bulma showing uh, her resiliency here. And now Samara. Samara getting a little cocky. Oh, and pays for it. Pays for it. Huge mistake by Samara Morgan. Oh, but responding with a cross. But that... Honestly, that may have just pissed her off. Honestly, uh, the cockiness of the wrestlers here often bites them in the ass. But, oh, and a suicide dive by Samara. But perhaps Samara doesn't even have that flaw. I mean, she got caught with her pants down, got dropped right in the face in the corner, and responded with a crossbody and a suicide dive. Not what you would expect off of someone getting drop kicked after being so cocky. Oh, and look at this. It's all oh, pump handle suplex on the floor right on it on Bulma's hip. That was a nasty landing for the number one contender, and Samara just going to town. It is very likely that this is going to be a repeat of Fusion, ladies and gentlemen, but can Bulma get the job done? Can Bulma become the FF, YouTube, uh, the FF World Champion? Excuse me. Uh, the FF YouTube Champion, of course, is uh, Bayonetta. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Samara. Oh, looking to finish her off. Going for the Tombstone. Tombstone pile driver. Oh, that was disgusting looking. Into the cover. One, two... No, Bulma kicks out! Bulma kicked out of the tombstone! And Samara can't believe... Oh, Samara's pissed. Not very often... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, looking to follow up with a choke slam. Choke slam might do it. Oh, but Bulma... Bulma saw the danger there and got out of the choke slam. Nice uh, counter by Bulma. And into a running neck snap. Perhaps trying to soften her up for the Capsule Corp stunner. Bulma needs to go for it. Or the Masenko Ha. We've seen her use that before. Oh, oh, big drop kick by Bulma. Oh, and now she's building momentum. Samara Morgan's in trouble. Oh, missed a clothesline, and oh, this time Bulma with a big running crossbody. Bulma building momentum, but she's got to be a little tired here. They've been going for several minutes here. Uh, both competitors have uh, absorbed a ton of damage. Oh, what is Bulma doing? Oh, shot! Like, perhaps going to go for that running knee again. That was devastating earlier. Can she connect with it a second time? And she does, right to the jaw. I, I would go for the cut. There we go, going for the cover, shooting the half. Will that be enough? One... Two, down again, Samara kicks out, and Bulma is beyond frustrated. But again, she needs to go for the Capsule Corp stunner. Uh oh she tried to go for something, but got kicked in the leg. Nice evasion by Samara. Again, she's so elusive. Oh, but Samara firing back. Sit out, Spine Buster, another move I've never seen Samara use before. Again, deepening her arsenal. Oh, is she going for another Tombstone? Oh, another Tombstone will do it. Another Tombstone pile driver, and good God, that just looks disgusting. A grotesque angle that Bulma's neck just went at. Oh, and, oh smart move by Samara. Not, not going for the cover immediately. Dragging her away from the ropes. Into the cover, hooking the leg. One, two, and three. Samara Morgan retains the FF World Championship in a hellacious battle. What a way to kick off the show. Bulma didn't come quite as close as she did at Fusion, but she still did a pretty good job. Got a few near falls, but again... Who can beat Samara? She just seems invincible. I, I don't know who can stop her. But again, uh, the winner of our main event will it's either going to be Xena or Tifa will be her next challenger. But speaking of number one contenders, ladies and gentlemen, up next we have this fatal four-way matchup to determine the number one contender for the FF YouTube Championship, the secondary belt here in uh, FF. We have Kim Possible, Taylor Swift, Mikasa Ackerman, and Kefla in this fatal four-way matchup. Uh, this is a uh, one fall to a finish matchup. You have to win inside the ring. This is not elimination. So the first person to get a pinfall or submission inside the ring will be the number one contender for Bayonetta. 
and honestly, any of these ladies, I would love to see go up against Bayonetta. Here comes Taylor Swift, who has been uh, building momentum. She has her own faction now, the Swifties, and the last time we saw her, uh, she went up against Yumiko, J Yumiko Jibami and beat her pretty decisively. And on that, uh, that episode of FF, we actually had a uh, commentary from the one and only, the lovely uh, Taylor Swift superfan herself, known as Anderson Krim, Andy Krim. Shout out to Andy. Uh, can her hero, Taylor Swift, uh, pull out another victory here in this uh, debut episode of FF Power, becoming the number one contender for the YouTube Championship? Again, Bayonetta does not have a match tonight, but again, you know she's going to be watching this very closely. Wanting to know who she will be defending the championship against next. She won the championship at uh, the Fusion pay-per-view event in that ladder matchup, and then she def uh, she actually retained it in a one-on-one -on -one match against Kefla because Kefla re uh, requested that matchup, and Bayonetta won. So we, uh, if if Kefla wins this match, we might be getting a rematch between Kefla and uh, Bayonetta. They had a great match, so I, I would very much be okay with that. Uh, Taylor Swift versus Bayonetta would also be interesting. Mikasa versus Bayonetta would be one hell of a, uh, a uh, match. And so would Kim Possible and Bayonetta. So, honestly, I'm happy with whoever wins this. But again, we have our massive main event still to come. We saw some more. We saw Samara Morgan just retain the FF World Championship. She will find out who her next challenger is at the end of the show in the last woman standing match between Tifa Lockhart and Xena the Warrior Princess. Uh, and those two have a long history in the Femme Fatale division, so uh, those two are going to want to tear each other apart later tonight. Of course, Mikasa earned her way into this matchup by defeating Sinua in a singles matchup using the Red Swan leg drop. And here comes Kim Possible. Honestly, from what I've been hearing from the fans, she's the favorite to win this matchup. Uh, she defeated Elektra in a one-on-one -on -one matchup recently, earning her way into this matchup. So Kim Possible also has... Basically, all of these women... Uh, have momentum going into this match. So it's going to be interesting to see who comes out of this the victor. But once again, uh, I feel the need to reiterate, this is not an elimination match. First woman to get a pinfall or a submission inside the ring wins the match. And there are no countouts and no disqualifications. So if you want to use weapons, by all means. They're under the ring for some reason. That's always been a trope in wrestling, and no one can quite explain why. Much to Jim Cornette and Sean McCarty's disdain. Uh, shout out to Sean, by the way. Uh, okay, here comes the final competitor in this matchup. Someone who ha came very close to winning the FF YouTube Championship on multiple occasions. Here comes Kefla from Dragon Ball Super. Uh, in that matchup she had against Bayonetta, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, she hit the spear on Bayonetta in that matchup. Uh, and she went for the cover, but Bayonetta was too close to the ropes. And uh, the referee saw it calling for the break. So, Kefla could very well be YouTube champion right now if not for that timely rope break. So, she's looking to rewrite that by uh, gaining another championship opportunity by winning this Fatal 4-Way match in the debut episode of FF Power. And we've already had one hell of a first impression with that FF World Championship matchup between Samara Morgan and Bulma. A very hard-fought affair. But, of course, of course, Samara does what she does best and win. While almost breaking someone's neck in the process. That was a nasty Tombstone pile driver, by the way. But can Kefla spear her way to victory in this matchup? Or is someone else going to win this Fatal 4-Way? Here we go. This is going to be intense and fast and furious. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, looks like uh, Kim going after Taylor. And, oh, splashing her in the corner. And a reverse DDT out the gate. And oh, a big German suplex. Never mind. I was about to say Mikasa was going after Kefla. But Kefla, oh, springboard forearm. And another springboard. Oh, springboard uh, looked like uh, almost knocked Kefla off her feet. But man, that did not take long. And oh, a nice release suplex by Kim Possible. Almost hit the referee. Referee needs to be careful. And a nice uh, side suplex and a drop kick to the back. And Kefla already going for a weapon. Already going for the steel chair. That did not take long at all. Again, no DQs here. Oh, and Mika's a smart move knocking that right out of her right out of her hands. But oh, cover. Uh, but uh, taking that. And a nice running cross body by Mikasa. Taylor Swift already trying to go for the win there with a cover on Kim Possible. And now Mikasa Ackerman going for a weapon herself. Well, she's bringing in her own chair. Again, Mikasa was also in that ladder match, uh, but she was unsuccessful. Of course, Bayonetta won the ladder match to win the title. But oh, oh, damn, steel chair right to the face. Kefla tried to kick the chair out of uh, Mikasa's hands, but uh, did not work. And Mikasa got her right in the face with a chair. And now Taylor Swift is trying to rip out Kim Possible's hair. 
That is just rude. That is just very rude. But I would expect nothing less. But, oh, big running uh, clothesline, it looked like. Knocking the chair out of Mikas' hand. And what is Taylor Swift going to do here? And you know, again, she has a fat... Will we see the Swifties try to get involved in this matchup? Mikasa, now is not the time to dedicate your heart. Look, do that after winning the match. Oh, big roundhouse kick by Kim Possible. And now Kim going to the outside, going for a weapon herself. Man, oh, she's got a kendo stick. And a nice spinning Saito suplex by Mikasa. Oh, Kim Possible. With, oh, right in the face with that kendo... Oh, and again, just going after Taylor Swift with these brutal kendo stick shots. And now Mikasa... Going for the cover on Kefla. One, two, but only a two count. Kick out at two. And Kim Possible going right after Mikasa. Does not want to lose this championship opportunity. Oh, and look at this. A backslide driver. Nice move by Kim, and that was a nasty landing. Oh, now oh, what is Kefla doing here? Fireman's carry. Oh, into a discus punch. Nice move by Kefla. That was a devastating punch. Oh, springboard forearm again taking out Mikasa. And Taylor Swift taking advantage. Oh, going after both women. Oh, what is Taylor going to do here? Suplex. Oh, she's got her up. Suplex. Oh, but Kim Possible able to get out of it. And oh, a shot right to the knee. Nice uh, chop block there. I went for a drop kick and a nice suplex by Mikasa. This, this might actually be a little tough to call. Oh, Taylor Swift with a face buster right on the leg of that chair. Not even the flat part of the chair. Oh, but Kim Possible responds with a spinning knee strike right to the face of Mikasa. One. Two! Oh, but a kick out at two by Mikasa. She almost knocked her out with that spinning knee strike. But how is Kim possible? How does Kim not have a broken nose? She got slammed face first on the leg of that chair. That Not even the flat part. That was nasty. Oh, wait. What is, what is Taylor Swift doing here? Second rope. Second rope bulldog by Taylor Swift. Oh, well, Kim, Mikasa. Oh, uh, Kim possible able to knock the chair out of her hand. On oh, Kim. Springboard moonsault. Oh, and the back of Mikasa's head bounced off that chair. Nice move by Kim. Kim going after Taylor with a shin breaker. Shin breaker on Taylor. Again, she went after the leg of Taylor Swift earlier. Oh, God. Don't oh, chair to the face of the national icon known as Taylor Swift for some reason. Oh, but, oh, oh but look at this. Oh, Mikasa with a big... Oh, man, not, not a beautiful move by Mikasa. That spinning Spanish fly and a roundhouse kick by Kefla. Man, high impact move after high impact move on Kefla trying to steal the pin. But Mikasa right there not going to let that happen. Oh, Mikasa going for a guillotine. Guillotine locked in. Oh, but Kim Possible is back in the ring and breaks that up immediately. Man, so many close calls in this match already. This has been very intense. Oh, look at the old suplex. Oh, right into an arm bar. Beautiful move by Kim Possible. Right into the cross arm breaker. Will she get the submission here? Oh, oh, but Mikasa able to fight her way out of it with some big right hands. But some damage had to be done to that left arm. Oh, but look, everyone back in the ring now. Again, first pinfall or submission wins the match. And a big back body drop by Taylor Swift. Right into a cover. One, but oh, it immediately gets broken up by Kim Possible. Taylor thought that she was uh, too busy occupied with Mika. So, oh, headbutt by Taylor Swift. I don't know if I'd be headbutting someone immediately after getting hit in the head with a chair, but a snap suplex. Oh, but Kefla right there to break up that pinfall attempt. You got to make sure everyone else is down before you start going for the pin or a submission. When oh, another discus punch off the shoulders by Kefla. Devastating blow there. And who's going to win this thing? And oh, discus forearm. Knocking her down. Oh, counter by Kim Possible. It looked like Mikasa was going for a suplex, but got countered into a bulldog. And now Kefla and Taylor Swift fighting on the outside of the ring. And Kefla with a big suplex. And oh, and a knee. A kitchen sink knee, to the, a knee strike to the gut. Oh, and a double stomp by Kim Possible. Just taking it to Mikasa Ackerman right now. And Kim... Oh, she's got that chair. Oh, went for a swing, but oh, but Mikasa was able to get out of the way. Oh, oh man, nice drop toe hold. Perfectly placed drop toe hold. Face first into the chair, and Red Swan right on top of the chair. That's it. Kim Possible's done. One, two, three. Mikasa wins. Mikasa is your number one contender. First of timely drop toe hold, sending Kim Possible face first into that steel chair, and then the Red Swan leg drop. Back of the head, bouncing off the chair. I, I think that might have just knocked Kim Possible unconscious. Mikasa Ackerman gets the win and will be challenging Bayonetta for the FF YouTube title. That is a match right there. That is a stacked matchup right there. Mikasa versus Bayonetta sign me up. But up next, ladies and gentlemen, going from a lot of women with some momentum to women without. Senua versus Yumiko Jibami in a matchup uh, coming up next. These two women have been struggling uh, since the formation of FF. Uh, they've both had two matches, two losses. So this is their, the third match for both of them. 
Look at this. Can one of them finally get a win? Because Yumiko, she made her debut against Bayonetta, funnily enough. And to put it nicely, she got her ass beat by Bayonetta. She got raffle stomped by Bayonetta on the final episode of XAW. She did a little bit better against Taylor Swift, but still came out on the losing end. How is she going to do against Senua? Now, Senua was in that Fatal 4-Way ladder match um, for the YouTube Championship back at FF Fusion. Uh, uh, at XTW FF Fusion, excuse me. And, of course, she lost that matchup. Uh, Bayonetta won that match. And, of course, Senua then went one-on-one -on -one against Mikasa Ackerman. Uh, and, uh, of course, Mikasa won that matchup, which secured her spot in the Fatal 4-Way we just watched. So both Senua and uh, Yumiko Jibami have been on the losing end of things more often than not. Looking to see who can break their losing streak here tonight on the first episode of FF Power, because we're all about breaking losing streaks and giving people opportunities here on FF. And here comes Yumiko. Still got to be embarrassed, at, especially after how her debut went. Her debut could not have been more disastrous. Well, I would say her debut could not have been more disastrous, but, I mean... Where, uh, Katana has a matchup later tonight against Android 18 uh, after her debut was ruined thanks in part to Bulma and Vegeta several weeks ago so uh, it, honestly who got who had the worst debut w was it Yumiko or was it Katana here in TAW but again Yumiko looking to right those wrongs and win her first match here in FF and Sinoa of course also looking to win her first match so who is going to break their losing streak Unless, of course, there's a double counter, which would just be hilarious at this point. When oh, Yumiko trying to start this thing off with some strikes, going right after the arm. Honestly, I could feel a little bit of desperation in that opening volley by Yumiko. But again, I can't I, I can't blame her, but got to be careful about that. Snap suplex. Uh, and she knows how dangerous Sinua is. And oh, immediately into a guillotine. Trying to take her out early here with the guillotine. She's got it locked in. Oh, but Sinema trying to fire out of it. Oh, what a beautiful bridge to get out of that submission predicament. Oh, now look at this. Oh, float over and into a DDT. Did you see how fast Sinema did that? She she is absolutely a warrior, ladies and gentlemen. And returning the favor with her own uh, arm slam and now going into a Fujiwara arm bar. Going to try to break my arm. Well, you know what, bitch? I'll break yours. And then I'll go Quan Chi on your ass and beat you with your own arm. Hopefully it doesn't get to that because we don't we don't want you know dismemberment here on this wrestling show. Calm down, Sinoa. And again, going after the arm. Um, what what are these two going to have to do? Oh wait, what is this? Oh, a deadlift into a Fisher, I guess a Fisher Woman's Buster. Nice move by Sinoa, showcasing her her just strength and ferocity. Nice takedown though on Yumiko, and it looks like Sinoa can feel it, ladies and gentlemen, in the driver's seat. Although again, she needs to not be too cocky. And now picking her back up, going right back after the arm. And oh, and again, just yanking her down. Trying perhaps to get a submission with the Fujiwara armbar. Or at least do some damage. And now Senua has established her ground game. Shooting the half off of that, that hold cover. One, but only a one count. Not enough to keep her down for the three, but definitely making her think about it. Now perhaps just trying to wear her down more than anything else. And oh, a stomp right to the back of the head. On oh, the point of the elbow. Oh, point of the elbow right to the face. Senua has slowed things down and is just taking it to her. But, oh, drop toe hold counter. Nice counter by Yumiko. Trying to get back into this thing. And now Yumiko's trying to pick up the pace with some big axe handles. And now just, oh, shoulder block to the gut. Yumiko building momentum. She needs to continue to capitalize on this. Celebrate later, Yumiko. And a nice uh, backsplash in the corner. Oh, and again, too cocky. She is too cocky. Oh, and that rebound clothesline might have just knocked her out. Into the cover. One two oh and a kick out at two she missed her on that first clothesline but caught her with that left-handed clothesline right in the back of the head yumiko's lucky that she's not seeing stars right now oh oh she might be seeing stars after that suicide dive just wiping out yumiko i want to kick right to the face and oh and a stomp to the back of the head man cinnamon taking no prisoners and oh knee to the head oh that's nasty that is gruesome Man, I, I would just, after that devastating knee to the skull, just squishing her head against the floor, I just throw her back in the ring. And, oh! Discus clothesline on top, man. Cinema making mincemeat of Yumiko Jibami right now. And just, oh, slamming her right into the apron. Man, that, it is not looking good for Yumiko Jibami right now. Again, she just cannot put it together. Oh, but uh, uh, Senua breaking the count. And, oh, Yurinagi. Oh, going right into the Anaconda Vice. Jesus, Senua, Tell us how you really feel. 
but again, you can't really get a submission on the outside of the ring. I mean, Yumiko could tap, but it wouldn't matter. You have to win inside the ring via submission, but I guess this is more just about torture. Oh, but yeah, Yumiko fighting out of it with some knees to the back of that. Perhaps that was a mistake by Sinua. I would have gone for that submission hold inside the ring. Once again, you can't get a submission outside the ring. But both competitors back in the ring. All going for at the... Oh, nice release suplex by Yumiko. Can she build back some momentum here? She needs to keep it going. Irish whip into the ropes. And oh, Luis does press. Yumiko... Oh, Yumiko's frustrated. She's very frustrated. But again, stop getting cocky. Oh, look at this. A big belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Yumiko. Oh, but not going for the cover. Oh, Yumiko, what is Yumiko doing here? And Oh, my God! She just crushed Sinua. That was disgusting. One, two. <laughs> How did Sinua kick out of that? She landed right on her head. That I, I don't know what she was trying with that senton, but it clearly worked. Sinua trying to get back up. Oh, shot to the gut. Oh, perhaps an opening. And oh, no, oh, slamming her face first into the mat. First she landed on her face, and now slamming her. One, two, three. And just like that, Yumiko Jibami wins her first match in FF. There we go. And that senton's what did the real damage. She landed right on Sinua's head, and then slammed her head into the mat, and got the one, two, three. Finally, Yumiko with a W on the board. She can be very proud of that, and she can finally hang her head in victory, but don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We are just getting started on the first episode of FF Power. Alright, up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have Blossom versus Oksana in a singles match. These two were involved in a... Oh my god! What, what the hell is this? Taylor Swift assaulting Mikasa backstage with a baseball bat. But I, let me guess. Upset that you didn't win the Fatal 4-Way, huh? Really? Really, Taylor? Are you serious? Oh no. And I'll ride face first into that car. Can someone get back there and stop this? This is ridiculous. Mikasa already won the number one contendership earlier in the show and is supposed to be facing Bayonetta for the, the YouTube Championship. Oh no. Oh no. Put her down. Uh, not like that. Oh my god. Face first through that window. Really? What a sore loser. Okay. What, what the hell is this? Miley Cyrus attacking Kim Possible. Again, Miley Cyrus and Kim. And Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift are in cahoots. They're a part of the Swifties. Where's she go? Where is she go? Kim Possible lost the four-way earlier, and now she's getting beat up by Miley. Probably on orders of Taylor Swift. Oh, no. Oh, no. The, oh, the flower liner! 
right on that metal grate. See, there's just chaos backstage right now. Uh, the, there she go, getting attacked by the other, the other members of the Swifties. Hermione and Daphne now assaulting Shigo. Just absolute chaos backstage. Oh no. Uh, oh my god, just powerbomb right into that soda machine. The Swifties are just picking apart everyone backstage. Just because Taylor Swift lost the four way. Wow. Can someone get back there? Like every bit of security we have. Stop the Swifties. It is DEFCON 5. Stop the Swifties. My god. There's, there's overreacting and being a sore loser, and then there's just trying to rip apart the backstage area with your little army of sycophants. But uh, we're moving on to what was supposed to be next, uh, Blossom of the Powerpuff Girls going up against Oksana of the Real Divas. Uh, Oksana requested this match because she's very upset that she was actually pinned by Blossom in a six-woman tag team match uh, a, a little over a month ago when the Powerpuff Girls debuted. Uh, when they had that six-woman tag match against the Real Divas. And in that match, Blossom pinned Oksana with the shooting Blossom press. So, man, I'm all flustered, hot, and bothered because of what just happened. It is absolute madness backstage right now. Just, the Swifties have just tried to burn the whole place down. Well, you know what, Taylor? M maybe win the match next time, okay? It, dear God. That was nuts. I hope that really, I really hope that doesn't set a precedent for the future of FF because that was ridiculous. Here comes Ox Oksana, who's very upset that she was pinned by Blossom in that six woman tag. Wants to get revenge here tonight. And we still have a whole bunch of other stuff to come. We have the tag team champions in action up next. Uh, we have uh, the Mean Green Machines versus Guns and Pizza. We have Katana versus 18 in a, in a rematch. We have our main event. Last Woman Standing between Tifa Lockhart and Xena, where the winner will face Samara Morgan for the FF World title. Man, I thought things were relatively fine and normal for the first half of this episode. We just had some matches, and, and now all hell is broken loose. But here we go with this match. Uh, Blossom looking to re repeat the, the success she had in the six-woman tag, as this match is now underway. And oh, great. Alright, these factions are starting to piss me off. The real divas coming out here, Layla and Caitlyn, to distract Blossom. Oh, the Powerpuff Girls! Bubbles of Buttercup laying them out, evening the playing field. Oh, it looks like that distracted Oksana. Oh, just gets kneed right in the mouth. And Blossom taking full advantage of that, setting up for the Blossom Bomb and Face Plant. Is that enough right off rip? One, two, and three, just like that. Blossom pins Oksana again. The Real Divas tried to screw over Blossom in this match, but uh, the rest of the Power Buff Girls were like, um, actually, no thanks. We're gonna have Blossom win this match. Thank you. The Twisted Sisters! that just assaulting the Power Buff Girls on the ramp! What the? Dollface and Sophie can And Harley! Harley with a baseball bat! What is this episode? Just faction warfare tonight, I guess. And the... Oh, I don't even know what to say. The Twisted Sisters out here to make a mark and beat the tar out of the Powerpuff Girls. Blossom can't even celebrate her quick win over Oksana. Oh no. Oh, Harley Quinn setting up for the pudding drop right on top of the baseball bat. And the Powerpuff Girls are now out of, out of commission. Can't even celebrate their win. Wow. First we have the Swifties raising hell backstage and now we have the Twisted Sisters raising hell on stage. This is absolute pandemonium right now. And the, the Twisted Sisters are up next. They're, they're facing off against the Tag Team Champions, the Jigglypuffs. What has happened to this episode? Again, the first couple matches were like... They're, they're, it was just a normal wrestling show. And now it's become, it's become Gang Warfare, the movie. And here come the Jigglypuffs, the FF Tag Team Champions. Uh, they won those titles back at Fusion. And then they retained them against the Mean Green Machines uh, not too long ago. Can they defeat the Twisted Sisters? It's supposed to be Harley Quinn and Dollface, if uh, I am, uh, if I'm correct. And Sophie Kane's still out here, and they're trying to get the the Powerpuff. The Powerpuff Girls are are not looking good. They're in rough shape. One got choke slammed. The other one got body slammed on the ramp, and Blossom got knocked out with a baseball bat. But here we go. This is a non-title match. This is the championships are not on the line. But if the Twisted Sisters win, God forbid, 
they're, they're obviously they're looking at another opportunity for the tag team titles. Remember, the, the Twisted Sisters were the first UCT Femme Style Tag Team Champions, so they have experience with that. Oh, but look at this. We're starting with Harley and Dawn. Nice inverted atomic drop and a big spinning back elbow. All right, I, I know I'm not supposed to be biased, but Jigglypuffs, can you please beat the pants off these clown these clown ladies? I, I really don't want this show to descend into anarchy. And oh, nice belly-to-belly -belly suplex counter by Don as the, the tag team champions look to gain control in this match. Big forearm and a nip up. Man, Don is so impressive. And again, the Jigglypuffs have... Oh, and from the apron, Dollface with a cheap shot. And Harley Quinn taking complete advantage of that. Just, I don't even know what to say at this point. This is ridiculous. And now going after her wrist. And now Sophie Kane is on the apron. Clearly, the numbers advantage rests with the Twisted Sisters. Even though this is not a handicap match, the Twisted Sisters would probably like that. But now pushing Harley Quinn to the outside. And a drop kick, and down goes Harley. Oh, now. And oh, there we go. Don not happy about that at all. And now just flying through the sky with the greatest of ease, wiping out Harley Quinn. It looks like the Jigglypuffs are in control. I mean, they've been so impressive. Oh, double team on Harley and spiking her with a double DDT on the floor. You honestly deserve that. You very much deserve that, Harley. And now throwing her back into the ring. I still just can't get over that we had the, the Swifties destroying people backstage. And we cut to, you know, on stage and the, the Twisted Sisters are breaking everyone in half. And a springboard cross body. I'm just very worried about FF all of a sudden. Into the cover. One... Two. Oh, and a two and a half. That was a little bit closer than I thought it was going to be. And now some more. Ch oh, nice combination of chops by Don. But Harley Quinn trying to fire back with a nice punch. And now off that, that punch staggered her. Now throwing her back into friendly territory. Oh, counter, counter by Don. Don not allowing her to go for the tag. Oh, went for another chop but got blocked that time. Oh, big roundhouse kick by Harley. Tag made. Here comes Dollface, who's honestly a brawler. Oh, and Dawn backing up. Oh, I thought she was going to go for a tag, but perhaps just trying to uh, get readjusted here. She did just get kicked right in the head. And, oh, and she's got need right in the face. Oh, and a big spinning shoulder cannon right there. I'm not super happy with the Twisted Scissors right now, but I cannot deny their, their ability, their talent, and their battle acumen. And now a head scissors and an elbow right to Dawn's hat. Not sure how effective that is. And now Dollface top rope. And oh, a big spinning elbow from the top rope. Into the cover, one, two, but only a two. And again, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the tag team titles are not on the line. Well, tag made, finally, here comes Misty for the first time in this match. And oh, double feet right to the face. And now Misty from behind, oh, drop kick right to the spine, knocking her down. Oh, springboard, cross body, wiping out Dollface. Nice move. And from the, again, from the apron, Harley Quinn restraining Misty, the dirty tactics of the Twisted Sisters, and a headbutt with the mask. When is this Cody Rhodes circa 2011 all over again? Really? I mean, he is the WWE champion right now, so, I mean, if you're going to, but, but that, that was when he was the, I don't even, whatever. And now, hard Irish, Sophie, get off the apron. I'm so irritated right now. Big body slam by Dollface. Oh, bouncing off the ropes, and an elbow, a spinning elbow right to the sternum, man. Dollface really likes that spinning elbow. And a stomp right, right to the, right almost to the nether regions, but it looked like she got her in the gut. Top rope, Dollface, oh, tried to go for it again, but this time got caught. And the power of Misty into a backbreaker, knee right to the spine. Oh, and down goes Harley. And now, oh, big running drop kick by Misty. Please knock Sophie off the apron, please. Okay, I guess not. Oh, missile drop kick right to the face. And Misty starting to build some momentum. Top rope again. Moonsault. Moonsault connects into the cover. One. Oh, but only a one count. Alfred was a little slow to the cover right there. But he's an old man, so I'll forgive him. And oh, but I'll counter into a black hole slam. Or I guess a dull face hole. A twisted metal black hole slam. There we go. And oh, went for a course cruise senton. But Harley uh, missed it. Misty was able to move out of the way. And now tag made, Dollface in once again. And oh, another big flying for him, and another nip up. Oh, be careful of Dollface, be careful of Do What did I just say? What did I just say? D uh, Don tried to go up top for something, but Dollface just shoved her right off the ropes. If it weren't for the, the, the extra person advantage and all the dirty tactics, I feel like the Jigglypuffs would be, have been in control of this match for a lot longer. Oh, but a counter, an old shot right to the leg. Oh, what is Dawn doing here? Oh, duck under into a fireman's carry. What is she doing right here? And, oh, into a cutter! Into a cutter on the floor. There we go, Dawn. Oh, now look at this. And, oh, dropkick on Harley, who tried to sneak up behind her. 
Don was not having any of that. But you need to get uh, Dollface back into the ring and perhaps try to go for a pin. Oh, and look. Seriously? Really, Harley? Harley just yanked her off the apron. She bounced face first off the apron. These dirty tactics just, again, should not surprise anybody. And after attacking the Powerpuff Girls earlier, they're really, really trying to piss people off on this episode. But a nice moonsault by, Do by uh, Dollface into the cover. One, two. Oh, the Misty breaks it up. And again, uh, oh, <laughs> Dollface tried to drop kick Misty. Oh, but it took her eye off the ball. And a spinning teardrop suplex by Dawn. There we go. And now Dawn, perhaps, going to tag out. Tag made. Here comes Misty. And what are they going to have to do to take out the Twisted Sisters? Again, they have the woman advantage. The extra woman advantage. And they're they're not... They're absolutely willing to stoop to some dirty tactics. Which they have been doing throughout the match. And a tilt-a-whirl slam. Again, Misty showing some power. And springboard splash. And now Misty into the cover. One. Two. Oh, and a kick out at two. And now everyone's up. And now Misty again... Try, oh, Sophie on, try, on the apron trying to distract her. Oh, runs right to a clothesline. On, on that brief distraction may have worked. And a oh, hot tag. Hot tag. Here comes Harley Quinn. Oh, and taking down Misty with that uppercut. And now forearm knocking Don off the ropes. And now oh, Harley Quinn looking to take it to the champions here. And a nice Shira Uni. That Asai DDT. Will that be enough? Into the cover. One. Two. Oh, Don just barely breaks it up. Uh, it looked like Misty was kicking out at the same time, but still that was close. Oh, what a combination of strikes by Harley Quinn. And now what's Harley going to do here? Oh, oh, tried to go for something, but got countered. Oh, look at this. Oh, Dollface in the ring, and now everyone is confused. But get out of the ring, Dollface. Oh, oh, oh counter. Oh, now Harley Quinn just went flying. And again, uh, the, Jigglypuff, the Jigglypuff's trying to get something going here. I think that Harley Quinn was thinking about the pudding drop. That she hit with, uh, and oh, down goes Dollface. She hit Blossom with it earlier on top of a baseball bat, but I think Misty was ready for it. Oh, a shot to the gut. Oh, what's Misty gonna go for here? Oh, counter, 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 and into a face buster. Come on, Misty, you gotta go for the bubble beam. Your bread and butter, you gotta go for it. But just, just yeeting her into the turnbuckle. Oh, oh, right into a, right into a small, a, a roll up. But oh, but only a one. Uh, not even a one. Oh, 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 perhaps she let go of the hole early, and so she could get into the bubble beam! Bubble beam, but, but, uh, Sophie Kane's on the apron, distracting the referee. She's got her down, it's been a three off the bubble beam. Sophie Kane now, now leaving after already distracting the referee. Are you serious? Oh, and she got distracted, and Harley taking advantage with a roll-up. One, two, damn it! Damn it! The Twisted Sisters steal one. Thanks in part to Sophie Kane, distract the, the Jigglypuffs had this off of the bubble beam, but because of Sophie Kane distracting the referee, the referee didn't call for the pin, and Misty was confused as to why the referee wasn't counting, and that opened the door for Harley Quinn to hit the Hurricane Rana, hook both legs, and now they've pinned the Tag Team Champions. Now the Twisted Sisters have a, an FF Tag Team title shot lined up because they just pinned the champions. I did not think that this is how this episode was going to turn out. We have insanity in the back. We have insanity out here. And I'm sad. But moving right along, as my, as my anger and blood pressure continues to spike, we have a rematch between Katana and Android 18. This is, I guess, a do-over for Katana because Katana debuted on FF. Uh, several weeks ago before Hardcore Paradise, so a couple months ago. But her debut was ruined by Bulma and Vegeta, and they were trying to get one over on Liu Kang, which, I mean, he kind of had it coming. But Katana was kind of, I don't know if she's affiliated with... I mean, they're, she's dating Liu Kang, so... There's a very good chance that she's affiliated with the Shaolin Combat Club. I'm not sure. I haven't asked her. Uh, but she's very unhappy with how her debut went. Uh, she lost to Android 18 via submission because of the interference from Vegeta and Bulma. A very humiliating debut, but the uh, FF general manager, Mon Mothma, was willing to grant Katana this rematch to see if she can actually defeat Android 18. And uh, Android 18 probably won't have any help from Bulma because we saw Bulma earlier tonight lose to Samara Morgan when the FF world title was on the line. So Android 18... Probably going at it alone here tonight. As we're still trying to recuperate from the insanity of, of uh, what just happened momentarily. 
And I hear the backstage area has finally been calmed down. Uh, the Swifties have basically left the building. and uh, But the Twisted Sisters are celebrating right now, which, great. I don't even want to know what kind of mess they're going to leave backstage, but my god. That was... That was concerning. But here we go with this rematch. Katana trying to uh, make up for her loss and Owen immediately leaving the ring, perhaps trying to dr trying to draw Android 18 into a false sense of security. Oh, and that's exactly what she was doing. And oh, right into the steel steps. Okay, Katana not taking any chances. She does not want to lose again to the same woman. And I don't blame her. That was humiliating. Oh, counter. And oh, <laughs> my God. Russian leg sweep. And she just bounced off the steel steps. She's lucky she didn't break her neck. Oh, counter. And oh, Hurricane Rana into the steel steps. And 18, lucky she didn't break her spine. Man, de de devastating slams onto the steel steps in the early going of this match. One to seven. And oh, no. Oh, Katana tried to go for a drop kick. 18 saw it coming, got back in the ring. And... If, if Katana did not, not get the win knocked out of her, then I don't know how you could knock the win out of her at this point. She's back up, dropkick, knocking 18 off the apron. Oh, and look at this. Poor screw cross body, wiping out 18. But, man, that was a thud on the outside. That that had to hurt. And now uh, Katana going to try to get 18 back in the ring. There we go. Getting back in the ring and an elbow right to the face. Oh, Katana setting up for a guillotine leg drop on the apron. Still, that, that that heart of a landing right on the spine had to hurt. With, oh, nice rolling Liger kick, wiping out Android 18. Oh, and a knee right to the face. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of strikes from Katana here. And now throwing into the ropes. Oh, nice Japanese arm drag. Building momentum here. And a running Hurricane Rana. Katana all over Android 18 at the early goings. And this time nails a senton into the cover. One. Ah, oh, but only a one count. Android 18 is a former TAW Femme Fatale Champion, and oh, Spine Buster right there. That is why. That counter offense right there by Android 18, and I think Android 18, it would be wise if she goes after the back, because again, Katana went splat on the outside, right on her spine. So, I mean, the Spine Buster would work. <laughs> that would work. Uh, oh, look, oh, counter though, counter though. And, oh, Inseguri. Again, the striking game of Katana here. Really desperate to... Uh, basically washed away the bad taste of her debut that was ruined by Vegeta and Bulma here on the first episode of FF Power. And defeating a former champion would do that, but oh, gets German suplex right into the turnbuckle. Again, Android 18 loves those suplexes and those throws. Now she's got her in the corner and a kick. Oh, but oh, Katana trying to fight back, shoving her off, but runs into another double-A spine buster. And uh, Android 18 again needs to work on the back here because it's already been softened up. Oh, Katana. What is Katana doing here? Oh, trying to do something. Oh, but 18 saw that one coming and now suplexing her right back into the ring. Not sure what Katana was going for here, but oh, knee right to the face. And again, Android 18 focusing on the back of Katana. Oh, counter. And oh, oh, tit for tat there. Going off that counter. Reverse DDT. Nice counter by Katana. And now Katana. And oh, a kick right to the spine, right between the shoulder blades. I'll try to go for it again, but uh, she can't get too linear in her offense. Because, again, 18's a former champion. She'll be able to see right through that. Oh, counter to drop kick, counter to drop kick. Oh, missed clothesline. And, uh, oh, big German suplex again. Android 18 starting to build some momentum here. Katana in a little bit of trouble. And, oh, super kick right underneath the jaw. That might have knocked Katana out. Is Katana going to lose again? Into the cover. One, two. Oh, but kicks out at two. And of all the moves to lose to a super kick, I mean, that that's that's her boyfriend's bread and butter. But again, suckering 18 to the outside. Oh, but 18 again not falling for it. Not falling for it. Oh, counter. And oh, counter with a kick right to the face. Man. Oh, but 18 again firing back. Punch to the gut. Oh, double leg take. Oh, this is the move she used to make her submit in her debut, but they're on the outside of the ring. Oh, and I think 18 realized that she can't get a submission on the outside, so she released the hold. And she realizes the referee's at a count of five. Uh, once the referee gets to ten, the match is over. Oh, oh, but that may have been a mistake. Nice hot shot. Springboard splash by Katana. That mistake might cost 18 this match. And a beautiful standing moonsault by Katana. Oh, what is Katana going to go for here? Android 18 is spaghetti-legged. Oh, what is she going to do here? 
And oh, just raking the eyes, blinding her opponent. And oh, spin kick, nearly taking 18's head off. Into the cover, one, two, three. No, 18 kicks out. Oh, I can't believe that she kicked out of that. Oh, went for a, spring, a springboard kick, but 18 ducked underneath it. And oh, drop kick right to the back. And man, these two are just going neck and neck here. But oh, knee to the face again. Knee right to the nose that time. And Katana doing everything she can here. I think she's really shocked that she was able to kick out of that spinning kick to the head. And, oh, went for a drop kick, but at this, this time, 18 was able to avoid it. And 18 very, doing a very good job of countering a lot of uh, Katana's offense. But Katana trying to keep her foot on the gas pedal, and now spearing her right into the barricade. And what is Katana going to have to do here to put away 18? And another beautiful standing moonsault by Katana. What is Katana going to do here? What does she have on her mind? The referee up to a count of two. And now, oh, throwing her right to the ring post. Uh, oh, no. Oh, we, oh, we've seen this before. We've seen this before. Oh, no. We've seen 18 do this before. It's, oh, brutal kick. Just crushing 18's skull up against the ring post. Uh, I would honestly go for a count out right there. That was nasty. Oh, and again, and again throwing her right into the ring post. Face first. Android 18 might be out. Android 18 might be out cold. Katana throwing her right back into the ring at the eight count. And now shooting that into the cover. One, two, and three. I think she KO'd Android 18. I mean, first she kicked her head into the ring post, and then she slammed her head into the ring post twice. Yeah, that I, I, if 18's not concussed, then I'm surprised. But that was that was brutal. But Katana gets a measure of revenge, and she avenges her humiliating loss in her debut on the here on the first episode of FF Power. Katana, perhaps moving on to bigger and better things. I mean, she she just pinned a former Femme Fatale champion. So Katana looking to be a force to be reckoned with here on FF. But up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have two sets of former tag team champions here. Uh, the Mean Green Machines going up against Guns and Pizza. Both of these teams are former tag team champions. Uh, the Mean Green Machines were the former TAW Femme Fatale tag team champions. And Guns and Pizza were former UCT Femme Fatale tag team champions. So for the first time, I believe, these two teams are meeting here on the first episode of FF Power, jockeying for position as far as an opportunity for the Femme Fatale Tag Team titles are concerned. The, uh, the FF Tag Team titles are concerned. But although, well, g given what we just saw with the Twisted Sisters, they pinned the champions, so... I, I w this is basically, I would say, to determine... Well, this, is, I, this is not explicitly a number two contenders match, but I guess this would go a long way to determining... Uh, who is the number two contender? Uh, who are the two, number two contenders for the tag team titles? So it's all about jockeying for position, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, after this matchup, we have our huge main event: last woman standing number one contendership match: Tifa Lockhart versus Xena the Warrior Princess. The winner of that match will challenge Samara Morgan for the FF World Championship. And considering what we saw in our opening contest, Samara Morgan defeated Bulma once again. So. Again, I ask the question, who can beat Samara? Will it be Tifa Lockhart or will it be Xena the Warrior Princess? But here comes Guns and Pizza, former tag team champions, uh, looking to go up against uh, the uh, Mean Green Machines, or as Sean would call them, the Green Bazongas of Glory. Uh, that, defeating them would definitely go a long way as far as uh, earning another championship opportunity. Uh, I know they were very disappointed that they lost the UCT without tag team titles to the Jigglypuffs, which basically made them unable to compete for the FF tag team titles at uh, XTW FF Fusion. Uh, so they're again looking to get up there in the rankings. But they gotta go through the Mean Green Machines in order to do that. And here we go, starting off with Fiona. Oh, starting off with Fiona, oh, immediately bulldozing Trish. Oh, but Trish firing back, going into the corner. And, oh, big clothesline. This is gonna be a hard hitting tag team match, I can already tell you. I mean, the tag team match earlier was crazy enough, but. Hopefully this one is a little bit more fair and less chaotic. Uh, but, but we're talking about Fiona, the Statue of Liberty, and two women from Devil May Cry. So, fat chance of things staying calm. Oh, but Fiona. Uh, it looked like Trish was contemplating going for a springboard. But, oh, went for a shoulder block, but this time didn't knock her down. Oh, that time she did. Just a full force, a full force body block. Just wiping out Trish and now going into the legs. But, oh, kick to the face. Trish firing back. Oh, went for a shoulder block, but she did not... Oh, oh, ducked under that clothesline. And again, Fiona trying to go for something, but uh, Trish keeps evading. 
And oh, nice takedown by Trish. Nice arm drag takedown. And uh, Fiona is in enemy territory. Oh, uh, tag made. Here comes Lady. Oh, oh La uh, Fiona tried to go after Trish, but Lady taking advantage. Uh, is Fiona aware that they made a tag? Uh, oh, springboard crossbody. She's probably aware now. And now, oh, and... Oh, but this time Fiona saw the springboard coming and moved out of the way. And a face plant for Lady. Tag made. Here comes uh, the Statue of Liberty. Former TAW Femital Champion. And also, uh, I think she's like... Oh, oh, she's got Lady up. Oh, just hoisting her and just launching her across the ring. And now going after Trish. Man, the Statue of Liberty, a one-woman wrecking crew. I mean, she's a statue, but uh, she's a sentient uh, living statue, which is just terrifying. And, oh, count! Oh, nice sling blade counter. Beautiful counter by Trish, opening the door wide for Lady to take advantage. That was a smart, well-timed sling blade right there. Oh, and <laughs> so the Statue of Liberty getting a little punch drunk there. And a nice suplex. Guns and Pizza looking to take advantage of that and take control of this contest. I, I could be wrong, but I think the Statue of Liberty might be the only woman to hold a singles championship in uh, NTA. Oh, the, the only woman to hold a singles championship in this organization and a tag team title. I could be wrong. Oh, double team here. And oh, oh, a disrespectful smack to the face. I don't know if I would slap the Statue of Liberty, mostly because I think I would hurt my fingers, but uh, I don't want the statue to be angry with me. But a neck breaker, again, keeping her in, uh, within close proximity of her tag team partner, which is smart. You do not want to be too far away from your tag team partner in this matchup. And oh, oh, count. Oh, she missed that leg drop. And now, now Lady is in enemy territory, knee to the back of the head. Oh, oh counter. And oh, a jawbreaker. Nice counter by Lady. Oh, what a clothesline. Just decking Lady Liberty. Tag made. Here comes Trish once again. Oh, oh, tag made. Oh, that might have been a little bit of a blunder there for Guns and Pizza, allowing her to make the tag. And oh, quick tags here by the Mean Green Machines. Oh, are we going to see it? Here comes the Magnation Elbow. Take a drink or uh, take a shot of whatever you happen to be eating or drinking. Yes, we take shots of what we eat here. I Don't ask questions. Just do it. Shout out to Shia LaBeouf. Oh, uh, but I'll, I'll count, oh, and a, ni a nice jawbreaker again. Oh, but a counter again. So many counters here. Throwing into the corner. And oh, counter again. Counter after counter. Tag made. Here comes Fiona once again. And oh, and an unprotected shot right to the body. And now Trish in a little bit of trouble. And a clubbing blow to the back of the head. Oh, trying to go for something. Oh, but Trish able to avoid it. And now throwing Fiona back into her corner. Tag made. Here comes Lady. A lot of tags here in this match. A lot of tag team cohesion here, and a big crossbody block, an assisted crossbody by Lady. And now Guns and Pizza back in the driver's seat. Uh, never mind, nice counter with an arm drag. And now what is Fiona going to do here? Pulling her back in. Big power slam, snap power slam. When Fiona going after uh, Trish, knocking her off the apron. And now, oh, a front mount. And now just, just bludgeoning a Lady right in the face with those ham hock fists of hers. I would not ever want to get hit in the face by an ogre. But a nice bulldog, nice bulldog by Lady. Take another shot or a uh, drink of whatever you happen to be eating or drinking. Oh, oh look at this. Uh, Princess Fiona, Ogre Strongest Slam. Ogre Strongest Slam connects. And now into the cover, hooking the leg. But Trish is right there, going to break that up immediately. Oh, 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 Fiona, not happy about that. Oh, look at this. Double team choke slam, just planting Lady. Oh, yeah, Fiona's pissed. Fiona's not happy with Trish. Oh, no, not another one. Not another Ogre Strongest Slam on the floor. Oh, man. Trying to break the back of Trish. Oh, and she accidentally sent her into her own partner. Accidentally knocking the uh, Statue of Liberty off the apron, but uh, connected with an STO takedown. Well, now Fiona. Oh, big body splash from the top. And Guns and Pizza are in trouble right now. Not looking too hot. And another one into the cover. That might be it. One. To Dalba Trish right there to break it up. Oh, I thought she was still down from the Ogre Strongest Slam. Oh, but gets shoulder blocked again. Oh, and now look at this. Oh, uh, Trish in the way. And Lady, Lady's punch drunk as well. And throwing her back into the corner. And oh, no. Oh, and oh, just double poke to the eyes. I, I don't think that was entirely necessary, but it was effective. Oh, Lady's in trouble. Oh, trying to fire back, though. Try, just trying to throw her back into enemy, uh, into friendly territory. Oh, but oh, Statue of Liberty not having any of that. And, and Trish trying to get a tag, but to no avail. Scooping her up. Big sidewalk slam. And oh, the Mean Green Machines have all the momentum in the world right now. And just building even more momentum. 
Oh, the Statue of Liberty. Irish up into the... Oh, oh, but Alfred's in the way. Alfred's in the way. Dolma runs into a clothesline. <laughs> okay, Lady Liberty's like, you know what? I'm going to try that again. Alfred, stay out of my damn way. Oh, but big splash in the corner. Bouncing off the ropes. And a massive spear just about cutting Lady in half. Man, Guns and Pizza not looking too hot right now. And total oh, leg drop just crushing the midsection. Man, the Statue of Liberty has it in the driver's seat here. Oh, and Fiona taking care of Trish. Uh, th this might be a foregone conclusion for the mean green machines here. And the Statue of Liberty looking for the Lady... Uh, for looking for the Liberty Bomb. The Lady Bomb. She's going to hit the, the Liberty Bomb on Lady. Got her up and plants her with the Liberty Bomb. That might be it. And now into the cover. One, two, and three. The mean green machines... Finally with a win. It's been a little while since the Mean Green Machines have won. They haven't been doing well since they lost at Fusion, but finally getting back to their winning ways with a just a decisive victory over Guns and Pizza here on the first episode of FF Power. That was impressive. Again, Guns and Pizza are former UCT Femital Tag Team Champions, so they're no pushover. But man, the Mean Green Machines want to get the gold back, even though the belts, I think, are silver. But, but no, actually, they are gold this time. They got redesigned. Duh. Oh no! Oh no! Not the Twisted Sisters again! Damn it! Have you already done enough? They already took out. They already took out the Powerpuff Girls and the Tag Team Champions. And there's the ringleader, Harley Quinn, directing traffic, signaling that she wants to be the Tag Team Champions. And now they've got chairs just assaulting the Mean Green Machines. Really? Really? Why? Hey, oh my, who? Is that Taylor? Taylor Swift just bludgeoned Harley Quinn with a guitar! Oh my, I thought I thought the Swifties left already. I guess not. I guess Taylor Swift stuck around. I guess she's not happy that the Twisted Scissors are trying to run amok here. Oh my god, she's got... And better than revenge on the broken guitar! It is gang warfare, I guess. Taylor Swift wiping out Harley Quinn. And now for some upcoming matches. Starting on Saturday... Plankton will take on Connor Jameson in a submission match in the ongoing first round of the XTW Submission Championship Tournament. Next week, on the 2024 TAW Halloween Special, Jeff the Killer and Jason Voorhees will finally put an end to their rivalry in an Extreme Rules match. And finally, on the 13th TAW Super Show, the Shaolin Combat Club will face Vegeta, Trunks, and Gohan in a six-man tag elimination match with no DQs and no countouts. If Team Vegeta wins, Vegeta will get one final opportunity against Liu Kang for the TAW World Heavyweight Championship at the TAW Championship Showdown. However, if the Shaolin Combat Club are victorious, Vegeta will be banned from challenging for the title again for as long as Liu Kang is champion. Now, let's go back to ringside for our main event. It's main event time, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of this number one contendership, last woman standing match, will challenge Samara Morgan for the FF World Championship. It is Tifa Lockhart versus Xena the Warrior Princess in the main event of the first episode of FF Power. This is a personal one, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, it was Xena the Warrior Princess two years ago that broke Tifa's leg while she was the UCT Femme Fatale Champion. Uh, Tifa had to vacate that championship, and according to Tifa, there was some complications with some surgeries that she had to have. She basically almost lost her leg, and it almost ended her career. Xena was suspended because of that assault. Tifa returned to TAW, and by extension FF, and uh, Xena's uh, suspension was lifted, and they both have their eyes set on the FF World Championship in Samara Morgan. But Tifa, more than that... Uh, she wants revenge. She wants more than revenge. She was out here uh, cutting a promo earlier, basically saying that she wants to break every bone in Xena's body. Because remember, the last time these two saw each other was in a triple threat matchup that involved Bulma on the last episode of the Super Show. And during that match, Xena tried to break Tifa's leg again, which ended up costing them both the match, allowing Bulma to win the match and become the number one contender, although Bulma lost uh, the championship match earlier on in the show. So now we have these two going one-on-one -on -one in a last woman standing match. The winner of this match will face Samara Morgan for the title. But again, this is last woman standing. There are no pinfalls, no countouts, no disqualifications, and no submissions. The only way to win is to incapacitate your opponent so badly that they cannot stand up by the referee's count of 10. And not only are weapons allowed, they are encouraged. So 
We might see some more leg breaking in this uh, in this matchup. I, I hope for Tifa's sake that we don't because that already almost ended her career. She almost lost her leg because of this woman, Xena the Warrior Princess, who was pissed off at Tifa for winning the championship and taking it from Harley Quinn, which is what Xena wanted to do. So I, it is crazy to me the depths that Xena was able to lower herself to just to get one over on Tifa Lockhart. You know, Tifa Lockhart wants more than revenge here tonight in this matchup. Here we go. And, oh, wow, Xena already just turning her back on Tifa. What? How insulting. And Tifa not taking that very lightly. Big clothesline and a dropkick to start things off here. Again, last woman standing. This is going to be a brawl. And, oh, big clothesline by Xena as we get started here. Oh, and look at Xena. I knew this was going to happen. Immediately going after the leg that she broke two years ago, not wasting any time. You know that Xena is not going to show any mercy for Tifa Lockhart here. And again, zeroing in on that previously injured leg. And you know Tifa's got to be... Oh, Tifa was expecting it. You know Tifa was expecting it. And, oh, turnabout is fair play. Tifa going after Xena's leg. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, this is this is going to be nasty. This is You can feel just the animosity and hatred between these two. But, oh, a boot to the face. Nice counter by Xena. Oh, and counter into a power slam. Counter after counter. Both of these women are former UCT Femme Fatale champions looking to win the FF World title by going up against Samara Morgan. But they've got to win this match in order to do so. Nice spinning back kick. Shot to the gut. And, oh, punch right to the face. Uppercut to the jaw. And Tifa trying to take it to Xena here. Big drop kick knocking her into the ropes. And another drop kick knocking her clear out of the ring. And now Tifa on the top rope. Big cross body wiping out Xena. And I feel like we've seen nothing thus far in this matchup. Tifa wants revenge, ladies and gentlemen. I don't blame her. But, oh, knee right to the face up against the barricade. And again, like this is you can win the match anywhere as long as you get to keep your opponent down for the 10. And oh, Tifa just launched Xena knee first into the steel steps. Both competitors looking to take out the legs of their opponent, which makes sense because that's how you win this matchup by keeping them from standing up. They don't necessarily have to be unconscious, but as long as they aren't getting back up, that's what matters. And if you take out their legs and they won't be able to stand, then you win the match if they can't get up by the 10 count. Oh, and the steel steps already becoming live in this matchup. Oh, here we go. Tifa has them, took them from Xena. And oh, right to the face of Xena, the warrior princess. You know that had to feel good for Tifa. But look at that, not even letting the referee get to a two. She is not satisfied. Again, she said she wants to break every bone in Xena's body. And I, I, honestly, I get it, but you should more focus on winning the match. Because if, if you get too distracted with trying to exact revenge, that could come back and bite you. Oh, but a go behind. Oh, look at this. And, oh, Russian leg sweep by Xena. I don't think she quite clipped the steps. But you know Xena was trying to. I want another go behind. I don't like how close the steel steps are. And, oh, that time she got her back suplex. Spine first into the steel steps. That was a nasty landing. Oh, and off the ring post. And a big elbow drop on top of that. And now Xena's not even letting the referee count. They just want to demolish one another in this matchup. And a steel steps to the face again. The referee begins the count at a two. And Tifa getting back to her feet at the two count, but man, holding her head. And oh, uh, Xena tried to go for a kick, but Tifa stopped her with a drop kick right to the face. And now again, going after the leg. How poetic would, be, would it be if Tifa was able to break the leg of Xena in this matchup and win via, you know, leg breakage? And oh, big running bulldog. Take a shot of whatever you happen to be eating or drinking. Now Tifa going for another weapon. The referee continues to count. But again, Tifa not letting him continue. Uh, oh, steel cha chair right to the face again. This is about brutalization, ladies and gentlemen. But again, I would focus on winning the match. Don't let your thirst for vengeance cloud your judgment. Or this could happen. Oh, the Van Exenator kicking the chair right into the face of Tifa Lockhart. Just a devastating shot with that chair. And now just scoop slamming her right on top of the chair. And I don't think either of these two are going to be satisfied unless the other one legitimately has to go to the hospital. She's got that chair again. And oh, right to the spine. Man, th this is going to get nasty. This is going to get nasty. But Tifa trying to fire back, even though she's taking some brutal shots with that chair. And oh, gets drop kicked. And Xena landed right on the chair. And uh, it broke the chair. And a swinging neck breaker on the floor. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Tifa would love to break her. Oh, no. Oh, and a moonsault. Oh, but Xena rolled out of the way in a nasty face plant. Oh, that was that was brutal. That was hard to look at. Tifa somehow back on her feet. Oh, stealing the steel chair from Xena. 
And now Tifa looking to set up for her own Van Tifanator, kicking the chair right into Xena's face. But you gotta let the referee count, Tifa. I know that you're upset. I know that you're pissed, but you gotta let the referee do his job. Man, are we even gonna get to a 10 count? Because these two just don't even seem to care about the rules. They just want vengeance. Although Xena doesn't really... I don't know why Xena is so... I mean, yeah, she's part of the reason why you're not the UCT Femme Fatale Champion anymore, but that was more because of Harley Quinn than anything else. But man, Xena just trying to tear apart Tifa in this match and a drop kick right to the back of the head as this brawl, this just absolute slugfest continues. Oh, oh uh, Xena has something planned here. Perhaps Xeno's wing. Oh, wait, Fireman's Care. Oh, we've seen her turn this into an unprettier. And oh, right on the chair. Just crushing Tifa's head between her back and the chair. That was, that was disgusting. Uh, how is Tifa not concussed? And again, Xena does not even seem to want to win the match. Oh, what is this? What is this? And oh, neckbreaker from the second rope onto the chair. My God. That Tifa might be out. The referee beginning the count is already at three. And now it looks like Xena is actually letting him count. We're at a five. The magic number's ten, ladies and gentlemen. And it is closing in. Tifa might be done. Tifa might be done. We're at nine. Oh, and Tifa just barely gets back to her feet. Oh, counter, counter, counter. And right into the steel chair that Xena set up in the corner. How is Tifa back in this match? She almost just lost. Got back up at the nine. Uh, but that was a turnaround that she needed absolutely after just getting slammed on the chair two times in devastating fashion. But now just ricochets off of the turnbuckle via Irish Whip. And now Xena going for another weapon as the referee uh, starts over the count. Xena's got a table. Xena's got a table. Oh, uh, uh, Xena not satisfied. Wait, Xena. And oh, real? Why? Why would you hit the referee with the table? Trying to stop him from counting, but the outer's like, screw you, I'm going to keep counting. Just hit the referee right in the face with the table. Ref Alfred did not deserve that. He's an old man. Leave him alone. Oh, oh, Xena not satisfied. Oh, no, this will do it. This will do it. Tifa's in trouble. Here we go. And the oh, but Tifa moved out of the way, and Xena went crashing through the table and just got punched right in the face. Uh, that, that, uh, Xena's going to be picking splinters out of her backside for the next couple weeks. She missed that elbow drop, trying to finish off Tifa here. Oh, but Tifa. Oh, Tifa looks enraged on the second rope. Tifa with a nice blockbuster out of the second rope. Is she going to actually let the referee count? Uh, of course not. Of course not. Man, these two are so pissed off at each other. But, Tifa, you got to let the referee count. I know you want... I, I said this earlier. I know you want vengeance. But you gotta. What better way to get revenge than by becoming number one contender and defeating Xena the Warrior Princess? But, oh, but smacking her in the face with the table. Oh, God. What is Tifa planning here? What is on the mind of Tifa Lockhart? Oh, she's lining up the table with the announce table. I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned. Again, picking her back up as the referee's trying to. Ca oh, she's got the ring bell. Oh, she got the ring bell. Oh, no. And oh, shot right to the gut. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Just blasting her right in the base of the skull with the ring bell. She can honestly win off of that. And the referee's counting. The referee is counting. Oh, she's got that ladder. Got the ladder. And, oh, and Xena back to her feet. Oh, oh, she might not. She might wish that she stayed down. And, oh, ladder to the spine. My God. And the referee again trying to do his job and count. That, that honestly could do it. But it's honestly up to Tifa if she'll just let them... But she's setting up the ladder. I don't think she's satisfied. But the referee up to a set. It looks like she's contemplating. The referee's up to an... A Tifa has this match. Tifa! You had this match won. But again, she's not satisfied. She said she wants to break every bone in her body. Oh no, the Dolphin's Fury. Dolphin's Fury connects on the floor. That's it. It's over. But Tifa not letting the referee end the match. She's not done with Xena yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, for the love of God. Oh, I am afraid. I'm... Oh, my God. Oh, Tifa's going up top. Tifa's going up top. Oh, Tifa, don't do this. Tifa, oh, my... Jesus Christ! Oh, my God. Everything just exploded. Oh, my, my, my microphone... Okay, my microphone's not broken. I thought it was. Both competitors are down. 
Both competitors are down off of that thunderous, hellacious moonsault. And the referee has no choice but to continue the count. No one can break it up this time. He's at a seven. Oh, is this going to end via draw? Did they both just take each other out of this match? And we're at a nine. And ten. It is a draw, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh what? Oh, my God. What is this? Oh, I'm afraid. It is a draw. Oh, God. Oh, no. Some more all oh, the FF World Champion. I knew this was going to happen. Tombstone on Tifa. How is Xena back up? Oh, oh, uh, one for Tifa and one for Xena. Double Tombstone by the World Champion. Uh, but who's going to face Samara? The match ended in a draw. Oh, okay, here's the general manager. Hopefully to bring some sanity here. But Samara with a tombstone on both Xena and Tifa. What what is Mon Mothma? What does Mon Mothma have to say about this? Okay, how are we gonna solve this issue, Mon? Alright, alright, that makes sense. I was think I was thinking along the same lines. So we're going to get Samara Morning defending the FF world title against both Tifa and Xena in a triple threat match. My god, but how is Samara going to respond to this, ladies and gentlemen?